Hey everybody, on another episode of Let's Play. Today I'm taking a look at Catch the Snitch. This is the upcoming game from Night Games, um, set in the Harry Potter Wizarding World uh, from J.K. Rowling, uh, that features four playable teams, the Houses of Hogwarts, School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, vying to um, be the greatest Quidditch team of all time. So in the box, you're gonna have four different teams. Uh, there are rules for both uh, playing with the standard sort of like out of the box teams, as well as some more advanced rules for having cool spectators uh, take part and maybe influence the game and designing your own teams with sort of characters of legend, like for instance Harry Potter or um, you know other uh, other sort of like key features in the books like Draco Malfoy. Now some housekeeping: this is not a production copy of the game. The game is actually not in um, like finished form yet, and Night Models was just nice enough to send me a very, very nice pre-production copy that they put together uh, for me to be able to check out the game. This is not paid content, this is just me sort of having a chance to look at it first, which a big thanks to them for letting us do. Uh, and it's not a learn to play game, it's just a sort of first glance through the rules. Um, and setting up and playing a game according to the the core rulebook that uh, sort of has some like general ideas for playing your first game. So set up like this, play with out building and constructing your own teams with like the special characters and stuff, and with like the core tactics deck and stuff too. So we're gonna get a look at that, play through our first match, um, and you folks can get a look at this upcoming uh, new product from Night Games that's uh, I think going up for a, a crowdfund today. Um, and yeah, and I'm super excited to have gotten a first look at it. So let's take a look at the box, see what comes inside. Uh, do bear in mind, of course, that these are all pre-production. None of this is finished product. This is just the best the, the best looking sort of like demo copy that's <laughs> being put together that isn't actually finished. And we'll get this underway. There we go, a sexy pre-production proof of concept copy of Catch the Snitch. Um, a wizard sports board game in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter by Night Games. Uh, so uh, what do we got in the box? Um, we've got a rule book uh, with a quick reference on the back that walks us through the game. We got piles of tokens. Um, so everything from uh, our advantage token to these are stun tokens, tempo tokens, locked tokens for abilities, uh, advantage and disadvantage tokens for your dice, which you can gain from various effects from the tactics deck. Your scorecards for secret revealing of uh, what of the hoops is actually being... I, I'm going to get some of these specific names wrong. I'm pretty good with Harry Potter lingo. I don't remember what these dealies are called. Goals, I'm pretty sure. Just goal hoops, maybe? I think they have a special name, though. I'm forgetting it. Uh, you get your snitch deck, tactics decks, uh, along with additional tactics cards. We're playing a galleon cost game where you design your own tactics decks. We're playing with the um, initial zero cost stuff right now just to try the game out. All your player cards with all of their various abilities uh, in several different positions. Of course, you have your keeper, your seeker, your three chasers, and your two beaters. Now, there are special characters too. So, you, uh, for instance, Draco and Harry can be used as uh, seekers for both the Slytherin and the uh, Gryffindor team. You get models for such. So, again, these are not the production models. These are um, just early resin casts, uh, sprayed with some color so that you guys can see what they would look like when they come out. You get your position tags for the bottom here for your bases, uh, and they're all color coded to go with the positions of the players. Uh, so orange for your chasers, uh, black for the beaters, um, purple for the seekers, and white for the keepers. You get your balls, um, quaffles, your bludgers, and your snitch. Uh, of course, used throughout the game for various things. The bludgers will chase you down because they're all sentient like murder balls. Um, the quaffle is what you're going to score through the opponent's score zone with. And the snitch is the point of the game. Uh, and then, of course, you do have four teams in the box. So you get a Ravenclaw team as well. You're going to get a Hufflepuff team along with their associated decks and character cards. Uh, your Galleons can also be used for things like buying fans in the stands, like Severus Snape or Hermione Granger or just a fervent fan who can give you bonuses if you're using the Galleons to build your own um, decks and sort of like crew construction stuff or team construction. Uh, and you get your dice, and your dice come in different varieties. Uh, each basically scaling from advantage to uh, opportunity, which is the bat, to advantage to success, which is the quaffle. So um, the uh, quaffle is a success. Think of them as like strikes and blocks. So the quaffle is your strike. This is your block. So when you're reacting, typically you're looking to try and roll opportunities. Um, when you're... Um, acting you want to roll successes. A little stands token for placing your uh, spectators if you're you're buying spectators and the, the team construction stuff uh, and that's pretty much what comes in the box. So lots of stuff again nice to have four playable teams um, for some variety because uh, in sports games especially one of the things that you want to have is a bit of like 
meta game the game after the game where you go back after you played your first couple games and you want to think about well what do i want to build as far as a team goes what do i like from these additional tactics cards i haven't tried yet and it gives the game a little more legs i find when uh you've got um some sort of like experience with the game when you play it initially with you know the setup and play stuff that's in the rule book and then you can go and sort of dig down to layers and, and see what else you want to try and then having four teams means too you're you're not gonna have the same matchup you know infinitely there's 16 other combinations because you have four teams playing four teams plus the variations inside the teams themselves so for us to check out the game today, we're going to do the recommended um, first game process uh, of setting up the game and playing. So, setting up the game. Let's talk about the objects. The object is to catch the golden snitch. Now, over the course of the game, you're trying to acquire more of these snitch cards than your opponent. Um, by scoring goals. Every time you score a goal, you're going to get to grab a snitch card. Also, every time you complete a successful action, you're going to get a tempo point, and every time you get three tempo points, you can also select one of these cards. Now, the lagged cards don't go into the snitch deck. Um, what they do is they uh, are sort of like the balancing prize for the person that didn't collect as many cards. So the differential in your snitch hands, when the snitch is revealed, uh, you get lagged cards put in there. So you still have something to play, and there isn't like an overwhelming advantage. Uh, then the game basically goes into its second phase, which is the chase for the snitch as soon as this snitch card is revealed. So the first process that you're going to have after you've assembled your um, teams, so in this case we're pulling all of the zero value team cards for our seven player positions, um, and put them down. So you put your whole team in the starting deployment zone and one half of the pitch in the other, uh, and then your seekers down in the goal zones. You've constructed your deck. Again, we're only using the zero value cards uh, for the tactics deck. This is gonna be the Gryffindor one. This one's the Slytherin one. And of course I'm gonna do Gryffindor's doors versus Slytherins because that's the matchup that, <laughs> you know, is the big rivalry. Um, then you construct your snitch deck. and. This is the end state. So again, you're going to put the 10 basic snitch cards down as a deck, shuffle them, which I've already done, and then deal out the bottom four. So the bottom four snitch cards then get shuffled with the snitch to create um, the end state. And you're trying to find that snitch card. So basically everything that's below the snitch when it gets revealed becomes cards that you don't have access to um, and becomes where you move the snitch to off the track when the track starts uh, and um, as soon as it's revealed basically by dealing it down the first half ends you stop playing tactics cards and scoring and doing like actions with your players and you just race around this racetrack to find be the first person to catch the snitch I've shuffled the deck um, bottom four cards with that snitch card and then place them down we deal the first three cards into the track here as the cards that we are trying to grab by scoring uh, the qualifier into the the goal zones and also by earning tempo by completing actions um, and these are gonna grab the hands so like here's a vibe one move forward three spaces during the end game that's gonna be a good one to get move forward two spaces uh, and then your rival will also do different things uh, when you play these cards into effect so this is both a combination like of um, deck building that you're trying to grab over the course of the game by succeeding during the match and also um, your end game state trigger when you when you reveal that snitch card so I've gone through um, the first four steps of setup now. We've done the snitch deck. We're going to do our tactical cards, which means we shuffle our tactical decks and we each draw a hand of five cards. And they're, play they're played two ways. They're played to burn or to buy you actions. I'm going to play them face up uh, just so you, you folks can see them. Uh, and they're also used for what are called... Um, uh, not intrigues. Intrepid moves, and intrepid moves are the, the values, basically, the, the descriptors over here. So the top is the actions, how many actions you can take, and they're kind of like your buying currency for doing stuff during the turn. Then these are your additional abilities that you can do as effects on top of your actions. So there's my five Gryffindor ones, and I'm gonna get five Slytherin ones, and once our tactical hands are drawn, our tactics decks, um, we are ready to kick off. So kicking off, you're going to use the black dice, and you're going to have one player choose to be the opportunity and one to be the uh, success. So we'll have Gryffindors be the success and the opportunity to be Slytherin. Um, and it's just a 50-50 in this case. So opportunity means that we're going to have the attacking team be the Slytherins. They get the attacking team marker. Now this is always the person who's acting first, placing the first card from their tactics hands, revealing things first usually. Um, and they also gain possession of the Quaffle. So the Quaffle goes to one of their chasers. Um, we've got three here. Adrian Pusey, Marcus Flint, and Blaze Zabini. You're going to give it to Blaze because Blaze is real good at moving the ball. So you place the Quaffle in contact with that player and it becomes theirs. Player places a bludger, starting with the attacking player, and they can place it in any zone that isn't um, the deployment zone uh, or outfield, so you can't put it out of bounds. 
So both players place one. Typically you want to put one where you can put it in striking distance of your opponent because you're going to use these to hand out, both to gain tempo by hitting people with the bludger um, and also to um, hand out stuns which reduce successes. And it has to be in your rival's half of the pitch when you place it obviously. So you're going to place it somewhere where they might want to sit or step. So putting it back here and over here. Uh, means that it's in the rival half. Now these zones are in both halves, you might notice, because it has a center line here, which means they can be on either side. Put them in the deployment zone or the scoring zone, though. Then your players are going to break off from deployments, so the attacking coach chooses a player to do it, then the defending does two, then the attacking does two, and then the defending does one. The defender always does the final break off, basically, and you get placed from your deployment zone into an adjacent zone, or from the scoring zone into an adjacent zone, and each player can only be moved once. So, uh, first things first, the attacker has to place one. We're going to place a bludger over here, or a beater over here, rather which is going to be, what's your name? Uh, uh, just Slytherin Beater. He doesn't get, this guy doesn't get a name. He gets to place two. So we're gonna do, I think, George Weasley, because of course they're both Weasleys, over here with this Beater, or is our Bludger rather, to try and uh, make some attacks. And then we also need to defend this side. So I think we'll move Fred over here so that both of the Bludgers have a Beater in the zone. The defender gets to move two. Well, I think we send Blaze over here and the monster machines, and that means that his beater can defend him if he gets attacked. He can use his defense stat, he can, he can block for his friend as a reaction. And we get to do one more. Let's throw our own beater. Mm. No, let's throw our seeker over here, I think. Into the back. One left for the Gryffindors. Uh, they are not super excited about them being over here, so they want to throw some disadvantage down. And that means throwing a chaser over here to attempt to steal, I hope. With the kickoff done, we're now going to join into the game sequence. So both coaches are going to check their tactical decks to decide which card they want to place first. And the first card you play, you're always playing for action blocks. Now each action block is resolved in order, and you can see that some action blocks only have two, and some have three. And the number of actions you can do is the number of wizards on a broom that are in there. So right now it looks like the Gryffindors have one three action block, and so do the Slytherins. And then a one one, a one, and then two, a one two, and a one two. Uh, and it's pretty much the same over here, except we have uh, a three action block, a two one, a one two, a one two, and a one two. Now when you play these as action blocks, which is the top score here, which is gonna basically for the, the game sequence determine how many times you can move a player or do something, um, you're not gonna get to use their effect and these get discarded at the end. So you don't necessarily wanna have effects that you might want later to get played. We're gonna keep it simple for this one and we're both gonna ante in. So you ante in into your action deck over here, your section, and you won't show your opponent, but obviously from this point of view, it doesn't matter because we're just learning the game. Um, uh, and we're going to do, I think, the one two. So we have a lot of those. Uh, we're going to have them drop this one. So dropping a one two, and have the quaffle and could potentially score. Uh, so doing a one two for right now might be a good idea as well. So now starting with the attacking player, they can play cards for their effects as well. So the, the Slytherin player has to play first, that means the Gryffindor player is going to see what they're trying to do if they want to use any of these intrepid abilities. We've got a few to choose from here, so choose one of your players in a zone containing at least one rival with a stun counter, can't do that one this round because no one's stunned. Uh, each time you roll a um, result of three, uh, after applying all those sorry, three successes, you may place a stun token on a rival player who's on a have a stun token. Uh, pick a friendly chaser in the same zone as one of your beaters. That chaser may perform a free beat action using the shoot value instead of beat. Hmm, that feels really good because I have set that up over here. So we're going to play that over there and allow them to do it. Basically what it's going to allow me to do is have my chaser hit their chaser. And it's when it's my time to act. So we'll place that down. Then the Gryffindor player gets to play one. Well, they sure do like the idea of not getting hit. So they're gonna place this one, which is each of your chasers immediately performs a free move action. So then you could continue to play cards, but the Slytherin player is gonna decide not to, as is the Gryffindor player. And after that's done, uh, starting with the attacking team and then alternating, um, the interpreted moves uh, are then played, their effects are now resolved in reverse order, right to left, as the cards were laid out. The attacking coach resolves a card first, then the defending coach, then the coaches alternate until all of them have been resolved. Starting with um, the friendly chaser, which is going to be over here, we're going to have um, Blaze of BC uses shoot value, which is going to be orange, orange, black, to attack um, this chaser. His name is Dean Thomas. Now when he's attacked, he has to try and evade. Reaction. So when they get attacked, um, by a bludger, either because of a rival's beat action because the bludger attacks them, they can make a maneuver to try and do it. Beater is a target of a rival's beat action, they may use their defense value to roll this reaction. 
we don't have any kind of reaction here um, because this poor fella doesn't have the 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 beat the straight defense skill only beaters have that so this chaser is going to get attacked using his shoot value and as long as he rolls one success using a two oranges and a black he's going to gain a stun token he gets three successes one two three With the beat action uh they're in the same zone they uh uh, takes a dice roll if a successful place a stun token on the target. So he's gonna have a stun token um, And if he had the quaffle he'd lose it as well. So we're gonna take a stun and Throw that on poor Dean Thomas. You can have to three of these if you have a stun token You're minus one success or opportunity if you're attacking or defending in any situation so now We get to resolve these each of the chasers performs a free move action uh, So we'll have a chaser move back to here and then a chaser move to here. Now he's done now. Uh, and now these are resolved, they're done. Uh, and so we can put them in the discards for our relevant tactics decks. And we have our action blocks to resolve. With the attacking player, one action in the first action block. So they get to pick a model and do one of the actions that they can all do. Now there's two universal actions and then the rest of the actions are tied to your card. So move and recover. Move is you go from one um, section to an adjacent section. Recover is you remove a stun counter. So we're going to move uh, with good old Blaze Zabini. So Blaze uh, has a special skill. When this player performs a move action, they move up to two zones as long as they end the move closer to the opponent's scoring area than they began. So instead of moving one, he can score move two. And he's going to go one into this zone and then two over to here and be in the scoring zone. Resolves that action block, so that one's done. He only got one action of it, but he got to move all the way over there. Uh, so now we go to the action block for the Gryffindors. Well, uh, they're in trouble. They've got someone in scoring um, Sort of like range because it's in their scoring zone and they have a single action to try and stop it. So we're gonna use our keeper, which is uh, Oliver Wood and he's gonna try and steal now he steals with two block dice uh, And when you are targeted by a steal action, you can react with uh, Your own steal value. His steal value is two purples and a black. So he's gonna defend with that. Other effects here, no one's outnumbered, no one's stunned. When you're outnumbered in a zone, you lose successes just like being stunned. Um, and if you're outnumbered by more than two, it's two successes instead of one. So attempting to steal, Oliver's gonna roll his two dice and get no successes at all. So what happens to uh, Blaze? Blaze doesn't get any blocks either. So if it was reversed, that would have been four to three, but in this case, neither one succeeded at anything and the action fails. Resolves that action block. So now we're back to the Slytherin action block where they can take two actions. Now, if you score, you immediately end your action block. So we're gonna not try and score. We're gonna do something first and then try and score so we don't waste the second action. So with the first action in the action block, we're actually gonna move and we're gonna spread out slightly and have one of our chasers move into here with the seeker. Chaser's name is Adrian Pusey. Uh, when they perform move action, they can move up to two zones as well. So they're gonna move over to here. Slytherin chasers are all fast. The version of that for the Gryffindors is if you break tempo after a pass, do not lose the tempo point you'd earned. So basically breaking tempo allows you an additional advantage, but you lose your tempo points normally. The, gr the, the Gryffindors get to keep their tempo points. Action block, we're gonna try and shoot. Uh, and shooting means we aim at the hoop. So first things first, now normally you would do a blind ante to see which of the three hoops you're going to. Um, if your opponent guesses the right one, then uh, basically you're both gonna ante blindly in a card from the hoop deck. If it's the same, the uh, shooter gets an additional success, a free success, or sorry, if it's the same, you go normally. If it's not the same, you're aiming at the one the goalpost, the goalie's not trying to, um, the goalkeeper's not trying to defend, you get additional success. So you, the shooter wants it to be different, basically. So let's reveal, I'm just doing them randomly. Uh, the Gryffindor is defending number one, the shooter is attacking number three. Because the goalkeeper couldn't um, uh, guess which one they were gonna go for, then they get the additional success of their action. Let's go of, uh, sorry, orange, orange, black for Zane or Blaine Z Zabini, um, and our goalkeeper, which is Oliver Wood, has a catch of purple black. It's a reaction uh, to this. So let's see if the shot succeeds. He's at least one success. He gets plus one right now. So he's gonna get four, sorry, th uh, three successes to his roll. And then let's see if he can block it, purple and black with his catch ability. One, so he does not succeed and they score. And what that means is you can try to, uh, you can grab one of these cards uh, and the action block immediately ends. He comes loose in here. It would have gone to the keeper if he had managed to block it. 
Um, and we've scored. He gains a score token, because he scored. We get to pick one of these. We're gonna pick the one that moves three spaces, because that's awesome for the Slytherins. Immediately refill this with the next one, which again will deplete the deck and get us close to the Snitch card. It's the action block. So now we have two, uh, we have the next action block, um, and because um, it's a loose quaffle, the Gryffindors immediately become the attacking team. They can pick up the, the Quaffle by having anyone make an action in there, which is what we're gonna do. Two action blocks. The first thing we'll do is have um, this uh, Chaser, which is Dean, not Dean Thomas. It's, no, it is Dean Thomas? Yes. Dean Thomas, yes. It's Demelza Robbins. <laughs> gonna walk over here and take the Quaffle. First action in the action block. Uh, then we're going to attempt to pass. Pass, you can pass the Quaffle up to two uh, zones away, but we're going to pass it over here to... That's Demelza Robbins. It's Angelina Johnson making the pass. Uh, so her pass value is going to be uh, orange, purple, black. I'm going to attempt to uh, catch it with an intercept over there, so it's just a pass. Seeing one success and getting it, and that makes it... A successful pass, which means they will gain a tempo point as well. Um, and that tempo point uh, could be used to uh, also break tempo. Breaking tempo means you can immediately perform a free pass or a free shift of a zone. Um, and normally you'd give up your tempo point to do it, but the Gryffindors can just do it for free with their chasers. So we're just going to do that. We're going to have her pass and then also shift into this zone. Um, following up with our teammate. That was the end of that action blocks. We end the end of uh, turn phase, which means we discard these cards. And the bludgers move to where there is someone or they attack. Apparently the bludgers actually move before you do your cards. Now the bludgers always move and they try and move to adjacent zones with players in them. If they don't have anyone adjacent, they don't move, but they still count as having moved. And the defending player picks first. The Slytherin player is going to say, we want to move to an adjacent zone. So we're going to move this bludger over here and have it attack the seeker. Automatically counts as doing a success and the seeker can try to maneuver to avoid it, which is going to be two purples, or sorry, yeah, two purples and a black. Needs an opportunity. Doesn't get one though, and so gains a stun. Then the Gryffindor player can do the same, moving the bludger over to here and having it attack this beater. Or actually could move it over here into the goal zone and have it attack uh, the chaser. Well, I'll attack the chaser instead. Blaze, he can try and maneuver away. He's got one of each color dice to do so. And he needs an opportunity. He gets a bunch, so he's okay. No stun for him. We discard, discard our cards and we're on to a new turn. Now, both players would need to um, do a hand swap if they didn't have any cards left. Both players do have cards left, though. And so we're in the next round. So, going for a big turn, the Gryffindor player is going to play down the three in a row. The Slytherin player is going to play the uh, one and then two. The player is the, the Gryffindors. They can now play one of these. So choose, you can immediately reposition your Seeker up to three zones away, or you can perform a free move with your Seeker and one of your Chasers. You perform pass actions to friendly players up to three zones away. I think the immediately moving feels like a good one in this case for the Gryffindors. Uh, then a free move if there's stunned players in there. That feels like a good one because there's a bunch of stunned players right now down for the uh, Gryffindors. So resolving them, uh, starting over here, choose a, to reposition a seeker up to three zones away. We're going to do that by going one, two, uh, sorry, one, two, three over to here. Then choose one of your players in a zone containing at least one rival with a stun token. You may perform a free move. Dean Thomas being stunned, that means we could move over here. Or we could use this to get our other Seeker into the clear, which I think is what we're going to do. Moving over here. That's attacking player first. So these are now resolved. So we'll just flip them for the sake of convenience. Oops. No, uh, this one's not flipping. Get, get the right card there, Ash. <laughs> All right. And uh, first action block for the Gryffindors is going to be a pass. We're going to have a try and throw. Angelina Johnson, throw. Uh, she's got, or pass rather, she's got one of each color for her successes. And she needs to get one success to go two away. We do it. That's two, six, three successes, and we do. So we successfully throw it over here. We gain a tempo. And we can perform a break tempo without breaking anything. And she's actually just going to follow up, I think. Or we could have a move into the zone over here. Feels like the right one to do. Cool, because they ignore disadvantage, so you can actually move through zones with more players. Um, but it feels like getting in the scoring zone is the way to go. And that means we're on to the first action block for the Slytherins. They're going to try and uh, take this uh, ball with a steal for their one action. Our keeper here, Miles Bletchley, has a steal value of purple and black. Can he get some successes? He gets one. He has black, black, purple for her steal value. And blocks one as well, which means no success. On to the next one, she's gonna shoot. Her shoot value is one of each color. 
Does she succeed? Oh, sorry, first. She has th four successes, but where is she shooting? She's shooting at three, and Miles is blocking one, so she gets five successes. His ability to catch is gonna be two purples, though. So five successes to two, so she gets it in, and she scores. Her point. Tempo. This goes loose, and then she can immediately shift, and she'll shift back one to here. The team becomes uh, the uh, Slytherin, but we get to pick two of these now. That feels like... Move two spaces. And move four number of spaces equal to the difference between the two seekers. You refill. So move three spaces and... If you're behind by more than two spaces, move forward three spaces. Tempo now empties, uh, and it's the next action block. Two action blocks from the Slytherins. It's like a good time to go one and two. Move action is the first one. Second action, let's pass it over here. What's your pass skill? Two blocks. So two block dice, we need one success. Nothing, oh, it goes loose. And they lose the attacking again to the Gryffindors. Well, the Gryffindors get a single action here. It's gonna be Oliver. He's just going to take a move and pick up that ball, and that's it. And grab the Quaffles. Yeah. Attack, uh, so they luckily have the advantage the Gryffindors do right now uh, because of that miss. And that means that the um, Bludger's first move is going to be by uh, them. Now, unfortunately, both Bludgers can attack uh, the current ball carrier, which is Oliver. So they don't have a lot of choices, but they will make it so that this one attacks um, one of the Slytherins first, which is Blaze. He has to maneuver with one of each color to try and have it miss him. So does he do it? Whoops, uh, we need a purple. He does not, because uh, he's looking for opportunities. So he's gonna get a stun. And he's stunned, uh, and then the Slytherins get to go, and they're gonna move the other bludger over here and have it attack old Oliver Wood. So he has to maneuver with two purple and a black to try and block it, give me an opportunity, gets one and he's okay. The remaining cards are discarded into the pile and both players are left with a single tactics card for the next turn, next game choice. So just playing them both for effects and it's gonna be an action and a double action block for each of them. It moves because they've only got one card each. The Gryffindors are attacking and that does mean that there's an opportunity here to try and score again. Uh, with an undefended goal. Going right to a pass, uh, being able to pass over to here, because uh, it's one to two zones away. And Oliver's pass skill is going to be uh, a purple and a black. Needs one success, gets it, and that'll throw the quaffle over to here. Uh, use the opportunity to gain a tempo, and then not breaking tempo, this chaser will shift. Now Dean Thomas unfortunately is not feeling great because um, he is, uh, he is beat up a little bit. Make it hard to steal right now, so how are we gonna try and stop this with the Slytherins? Well, with a single move, it probably makes sense to move over to here and get the beater in place, or get their goalie, get the goalkeeper back in the zone. I think the goalkeeper getting back in the zone is probably the safer bet. The now have a double action block, and that means that although Dean is stunned, he'll attempt to move in. And then shoot. Minus one success, but both players now revealing their goal cards. Uh, so blocking one with a Slytherin and shooting for three. Cancel out the stun's lack of successes there. And he's gonna try and shoot with one of each color. And then uh, old Miles Bletchley blocking, or sorry, trying to catch with two purples. That's four successes. Two purples though, these are good dice. Nothing. Going loose, losing the attacker, but gaining a tempo for scoring. Gaining another score mark on Dean. And stealing another card for the Gryffindors. This then refills. And it's the Snitch! So the second phase, the Snitch is revealed. Both teams have spotted the Golden Snitch and will try to reach it. So both uh, the Snitch cards that you obtain during the first phase are integral. These are the two effects that are listed to help the Seeker win as detailed below. Race for the Snitch, place both, place both Seekers in the space at the end of the Snitch track. Both the Seekers have spotted the Snitch and head over to here. It's the Golden Snitch towards the Seekers, a number of spaces equal to twice the number of Snitch cards left in the Snitch deck and the row, not including the Snitch card itself. So there's four remaining, so eight, it's gonna go back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the Snitch is here. 
when they see it. And this is where they're racing towards. With the fewest snitch cards, will receive as many lagged cards as the difference between the number of snitch cards with their opponent. So with three snitch cards for the Gryffindor, that means two lagged cards get dealt to the, uh, the Slytherin player. Oh, I missed, we have to actually advance it four, uh, five, six, so t um, times two. So 12 spaces, so one, two, three, four more. Because you actually counted these cards remaining in the, the zone, but not the snitch card when you advance the snitch. Now with the snitch hands uh, put together, and I'm just gonna do these randomly because uh, I don't have an AI opponent, uh, we have to determine which of the two seekers is actually in the lead, and that's going to be the person with the most goal tokens to start off with, so that's the Gryffindor player. So they go in the lead, so they they basically resolve their card first and also are considered to reach the, the snitch first. If you end up in the same space over the course of uh, advance, um, the seeker who reached the space first is considered to be ahead. Each player secretly anties in one of their cards, and the player who is ahead reveals it first. Move forward two spaces, and then your rival chooses. The rival must move back two spaces, or you advance two spaces. Forward two. One, two. Now the rival uh, chooses. They must move back two spaces, or, advance, or I advance two spaces. Well, they'll choose to move back two spaces because they can't go any further back than they already are. Then we reveal the rival card, lagged, move forward a space. So they get to go to here. And they would both choose their next card to play. Uh, the leading player will then play it again. So reveal it. Your rival moves forward two spaces and then move forward a number of spaces equal to the difference in the spaces between the two seekers. So the rival's gonna go one, two, and then you move forward the difference. So one, but you're in the rear because you got their second. Then move forward three spaces. So move forward three, one, two, three. And if you're behind, move forward a number of spaces equal to the number of other snitch cards you've played so far. You're not behind. Finally, the last card gets revealed. If you're behind by two spaces, move forward three spaces. You are. So one, two, three, and you get their second. If you're behind, move forward five spaces. If you're ahead, your rival moves one space. If you're behind, so nothing happens. And then finally, lagged, move forward one space. And we run out of cards, so the snitch sequence ends with the Slytherin player closer, and through deft use of their cards, even though they didn't have as many cards, they catch the golden snitch and win the game, and the game goes to Slytherin. So there you have it, the setup and how to play uh, Harry Potter Catch the Snitch, a Wizards sports board game. Um, and there is a lot more to add to this afterwards, of course, like I said, uh, you can build your own team using galleons. Usually five galleons what you're gonna build, you'll use that to do things like buy spectators, uh, they have a magic zone or encouragement zone, so you can buy spectators and they have a galleon cost usually. Every team must be made, uh, if you're going to use um, your, your build your own stuff, uh, to build a tactical card deck, you have to have 15 cards. Uh, also, that you're discarding zero cost cards to put in the one cost cards. Uh, and then the same thing goes with your... Um, your 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 teams always need to be seven players uh, with the three positions, um, the straight four positions all covered. Using spectators optionally, you always get a fervent fan card for free. Um, so like uh, you can always have that one spectator. So if your opponent decides to use one that he's paying for, you're gonna have one no matter what. Um, and a coach can play a spectator card at the end of uh, any time by placing the marker in one of the empty zones or occupied by a rival spectator on the spectator stand. Each spectator card specifies which zones it can be placed in and then it triggers and applies its ability. So for instance, Severus Snape, he'll cost you a galleon if you want him as your fan. Uh, a rival player that receives a move action receives a negative token because he whispers something evil at you. Uh, or, uh, and then you lock it, a rival player that completes a move action receives a bonus token, minus purple token. You basically can play in your spectator card until you do a hand swap, since so you run out of tactical cards, um, in which case all the tokens come off and you have the opportunity to play them again. It's each hand, basically, you can have the, the stuff, the effects go into play for your spectators. Spectators in the box include things like Hermione, she'll cost one as well. Friendly player is about to um, perform a pass, she's a bonus. So you notice that Hermione and uh, Severus both cancel each other out, so plus and minus purple and plus and minus orange. And Fervent Fan is just rerolls, so you can reroll. Um, and it's free, obviously, because you're not paying for it. Uh, Reroll up to one uh, die from the current roll. And you'll notice they all occupy a different zone. So if you're taking Severus, he goes into the magic zone. If you're taking the fan, they occupy the fan zone or the magic zone. You can always use the fan, but you can block the magic zone from other people. Using these little tokens here. So Snape could go down the magical zone. The fan could go over here or over here. 
So there you go, a first look at Harry Potter Catch the Snitch, um, a wizard sports board game set in the wizarding world of Harry Potter from Night Games. Um, so just a reminder, uh, another bit of housekeeping, uh, that this is not paid content. I never accept payment for any of my Let's Plays. This is just uh, a nice gesture by Knight to send this along for you guys to check out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching it. We'll see you for more Let's Plays in the future. Till next time, I'm Ash. Have a great night. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs, um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible, uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else, and most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.